All right, welcome back to Daybreak on Trust TV. We'll move on to our second discussion. The ruling All Progressives Congress is yet to commence sale of forms to aspirants for party positions less than two weeks to the National Convention. Now, according to some party members, the plot by some governors to foist consensus uh, on the party has stalled the sale of forms. The delay in selling forms has sparked anxiety among aspirants in positions in the National Working Committee. A chieftain of the APC, Dr. Ibrahim Dauda, joins us in the studio for more discussion. Good morning and welcome to Daybreak. Good morning. Good morning and welcome. Thank you. Okay, now we saw over you know, 20,000 aggrieved members march to the Aso Villa to protest alleged plots by some APC governors you know, to impose you know, somebody for chairmanship of the APC. Could you talk to us about that? It is normal in politics within our own clime here, not normal within the standards of global politics mm. to have this kind of problems. It's absolutely not necessary. My opinion is I've always spoken against zoning and I will maintain my position on that. Nigeria has not benefited from it. And if it has, we wouldn't have been having the agitations we've been having from different, different, different quarters. It was a process of uh, a necessity in 1999, which was brought in to calm the system, coming from the annulment of June 12, the pressure on the system. It's not supposed to be a permanent pro, uh, process in Nigeria. But politicians have found a way of using it, you know, and Nigerians have accepted it. And I always ask this question, how have Nigeria benefited from zoning? If we have, then we should not be having the agitations we're having from different sectors of this country. Governors, party leaders, party members should understand one thing. Nigeria as a country should come first and the interests of this country should be first in the mind of every leader of any party. APC is supposed to have its convention on the 26th. My own opinion is the ticket should be left open and party members should elect whom they feel best suit that position. Because one of the major reasons you have conflicts in parties, uh, factions in political parties, is, you know, the leadership of parties coming together to decide what should have been decided by the generality of the people. Mm. Consensus is a good process, but it should be a process that people should partake in willingly, not being coerced to accept what ordinarily they would not. When you take away the free will of an individual, you have forced him to take a position that may be negative to the process. And to run away from future problems, I think the governors and the leaders of the party should sit down and look at the larger picture, which is Nigeria's unity, existence, coexistence, and our harmony as a nation. Okay. If they do that, I don't think we are going to have problems. All right. Now, the Imo State Governor, after his meeting with President Muhammadu Buhari, while speaking to journalists, you know, had said that if the need arises, the convention might be rescheduled. You know, uh, given the all upheaval that is propping up, propping up rather, at this time, do you see that happening? Well, anything is possible in this country, especially when we don't, we have, as a people, agreed not to conform to, you know, rules of law, processes that bind us together as a nation. Conducting this convention within the stipulated time agreed will be healthier for the party. What is the guarantee that if it is shifted, the same consensus will be reached within the time frame of whatever time it will be shifted. So my, my advice always is party leaders should put the country first 
and put personal interests behind. Because what we are trying to enthrone 2023 beyond is leadership that will put selfish interests or personal interests aside and put national interests above personal interest. If that is done, we won't be having problems. Mm. Okay, now, talking about uh, the party leaders putting, you know, uh, the party first. Now, uh, there was meant to be a meeting with uh, uh, the president, uh, which the president actually boycotted, you know, before traveling out. What was the agenda of the meeting? And, you know, why do you think, you know, the president, you know, didn't, you know, stay for that particular meeting? Well, I wasn't at the governor's meeting. Mm. I was, I'm not at any of the uh, decision-making meetings. Okay. I wouldn't know the reasons exactly. They are in a better position to say why they could not meet the president. In one quarters, it is said that they, they couldn't agree on a consensus on whether to zone it to what particular part of the country or not. Mm. But the fact still remains, and I will always keep on saying this, we should put our individual interests behind the national interests and put the country's interests first. So each day that goes by without a proper decision taken is delaying the process. Mm. And electoral process processes are timed. Every day you lose time. And when you lose time, you put pressure on the system. And when you put pressure on the system, you push people to make decisions without consideration to other, you know, uh, important uh, processes, which end up creating agitations and factions. And you waste precious time trying to do reconciliation mm -hmm. on problems that are practically avoidable. Mm. You know, so, so uh, you know, in your assessment, what is the way forward, you know, in regards to the whole issue of zoning and how, how important is it to actually talk about this issue? I've said it before. I've said it earlier and I'll say it again. I don't believe in zoning. It is creating more problems for Nigeria rather than solving any problem. If you look at the history of this country from, 20, uh, from 1999 to date, and I ask again, how has zoning solved our problems? If you insist on shifting power to the north or the south, okay, let's look at practicality of it. If you say you zone it to the south, in the south, you're talking of southwest, southeast, and south-south. How many tribes do you have in the south-south? In rivers alone, river state alone, how many tribes do you have? Now, are you going to zone it? within the individual tribes because we are talking of minority protection mm. isn't it and carrying everybody along giving everybody a sense of belonging so if you zone it to the south you are practically talking about zoning in nigeria within the context of the wazobia mm. mm -hmm. enclave talking yeah. of hausa ibo and yoruba that is practically what we are doing if you zone it to the north how many tribes do we have in Plateau? How many tri tribes do we have in Adamawa? Are you going to zone it to all those tribes before it goes back to another segment of the sector, sector uh, part of the country? So I think we are living in denial in this country, mm -hmm. trying to live on a process that is not feasible. But because of our emotion and sentiment, we keep on pushing this as an agenda, largely to satisfy personal interest. Now NLC is, uh, ASU is on strike, isn't it? Mm. Have they zoned the strike? <laughs> no, let's be realistic. Why, did, uh, why is ASU not zoning strikes? Why is NLC not zoning strike? If we are calling for a demonstration, we don't zone it, do we? Why do we only zone leaderships? We don't zone anything else. So if we are talking of zoning, in, a, in, the, in the context of protecting minority rights, then we should zone it among tribes, not regions. Because if you zone it to a particular region, there are minority tribes in this country that will never see the light of the day in, in, in ruling Nigeria. So how comfortable is that zoning? The dominant tribes within that region will still take away that position. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not healthy. 
parties should open up their processes and allow Nigerians, for God's sake, to elect leaders they believe in. Oh, but don't you think there will be negative implications to not zone in? What is the negative implications? When we existed from 1966 to 1983 in electoral processes, there was no zoning. What was the negative implication then? Hmm. It's because we are poor students of history. Hmm. That's the truth. America has more diversity than we have. Because America is, a, is, 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 is the United States is, is a summary of the whole world. Mm. There is no segment of tribe in the world that has not colonized in America. But they don't zone, do they? They have succeeded in living above that sentiment. But we as a people in Nigeria are holding ourselves to this sentiment. And we are killing ourselves, dragging ourselves over it and creating more problems. Mm. Nigeria have not zoned its leadership from independence to 1983. This zoning started in 1999, and I told you why. It was supposed to be a temporary solution to stabilize the country. After that, we succeeded in making it a permanent future, hiding under the guise of protecting minority, making people belong. And how has that fared? You have a process, a system where leaders come from a particular part of the country, neglected their own region, and another leader comes from another region entirely, and then solve the problem of that region. So how, how, how have zoning solved the problem of this country in that regard? You know, well, some would say America's democracy is more mature than ours is. What is the definition of maturity within the context of politics? Uh, they've been in it longer than Nigeria. And you talked about, you know, different climes. Earlier. How many countries today have gotten their independence 20, 25 years ago? Kazakhstan is one. Dubai has, is, is 50 years old. They are stable. Why is Africa having problems? Exactly. What really is the problem? Have you not asked that question? Why is only Africa having this problem? Because we have refused to mature. You see, Africans go out of this con uh, 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 the continent. Nigerians go out. Let me be specific to Nigeria. Our elites and our people go out of Nigeria and become mayors, ministers, mm -hmm. and whatever in other countries. Mm -hmm. And then when they come back, they advocate for zoning. Or they are there enjoying no zoning process. Mm. And from there, they advocate zoning. Is that not selfish? Okay. We, we, we need to live above board. Maturity does not come. You have to develop it internally. Mm. At what stage do we mature, if that is the case? Okay, now, with everything going on, would you say democracy is actually working for us? You know, if you even look at other uh, African countries with the number of coups, you know, uh, being perpetrated, you know, in most of these countries, would you say democracy is actually working for us Africans? We have refused allowed to allow democracy to work. That is why I said, what is wrong with Africa? You don't see these problems in other sectors of uh, other parts of the world. Even if there is, it's, it's minimal. The politicians and the ruling class are the cause of the problem because when you remove, you remove equity, mm. fairness, justice, and other things within the system, in your administrative processes, you cause agitations, you cause dis disaffections, and then it breeds what? It breeds violence and other things that mm. promote coup d'etats mm. and other civil disturbances. Mm. There are systems that are much bigger than Nigeria. But they are stable because their leadership, you, you've, recently you see in Canada, a Nigerian minister was removed. Mm. A Nigerian was removed as a minister. What was his offense? He received a parking ticket. His offense was he called the police who issued the parking ticket. Mm. And that cost him his job. In Nigeria, that will pass. Mm -hmm. It's a non-issue in this country. Mm. High level individuals abuse the law, break the law promote a lot of, you know, illegal behaviors. And they get away with it because we as a people have agreed that it is normal. Mm. Until and unless, as Nigerians, we grow above sentiment. These problems will continue and come 2027, we'll be back here talking about zoning, talking about the, the same problem.
Every four years, we sit down to discuss practically about the same thing. When do we mature above it? The governors, as leaders within their rights, have to go back and look at their priorities. Is it Nigeria? Is it peaceful coexistence? Or is it selfish interest? And we as a people have to do that too. Because we keep on living in denial and, you know, deceiving ourselves. Okay. And promoting things that are not realistic. We say democracy is nascent. Democracy will only work if collectively as a people we agree to allow it to work. It's not the fault of the leaders alone. Individual Nigerians also have their own issues. Mm -hmm. Because these leaders don't find their way there. They are elected. Let me give you an example. The Nigerians that are waiting to elect leaders now are looking at political parties to bring out candidates, isn't it? Yeah. Now, if you ask an average Nigerian to become a member or a cat carrying member of a political party, they will tell you they will not. If you go to developed countries today, UK, US, name it, Every individual in that country has an affiliation to a political party. They may not be partisan, but they are interested on how those parties bring out their candidates. You, but in this country, you sit out. You refuse to be a member of a political party. You allow few people to be part of the party process, card-carrying members. And you forget that those are the same people that will determine whom you vote for. Does that make sense? And then when they bring a candidate, the generality of Nigerians will begin to say, oh, no, we don't like this candidate. Why did you refuse to participate at, as cat carrying members? If majority of Nigerians will decide to join political parties at, as cat carrying members, they will play a role in electing candidature of, uh, of, of those parties. And then it makes it easier. The more people that are come, uh, uh, the more people are engaged in, part, in political party processes, the more it will give it a better sense of belonging, and it will make it difficult for individuals to manipulate. And again, I've said it somewhere that to break the jinx of monopoly of production of candidate by parties, we need to include in our process independent candidature. Because what is promoting crisscrossing between one party to another is because they have no, there is no elasticity in our system to promote independent candidature. If a person refuses to, or if the manifesto of the political parties does not appeal to an individual, what does he do? He has two options. Either to forcefully join the party he does not believe in, or he stays out of the whole entire system. And that robs the country of credible people. So the National Assembly need to also rethink their priorities in how the electoral processes should go. They should make it more liberal. The party, the party men will say no, but I believe if we're really interested in making the system liberal and promoting fairness and equity, that should be part of it. Because if that is included in the, in the Electoral Act, it will bring to rest a lot of issues concerning consensus, party primaries, and the rest of them, because people will have options. Mm. Okay. Now, this is a bit uh, controversial. Uh, now, a group of youths and stakeholders have called for the resignation of the Attorney General of the Federation, saying that uh, he's scheming to impose, you know, candidates on the party. <laughs> Could you comment on that? Uh, well, you see, when you talk of uh, individual uh, interest in, in party politics, it's all we have been discussing earlier on. But people are entitled to their opinions. If you are going to accuse an individual, you have to be factual mm -hmm. about it. You don't just wake up and then make accusations on personalities or individuals. You have to attach facts to it that will convince people that, yes, this is the reason you are saying what you are saying. If you don't do that, it becomes deformation of character. Mm -hmm. So. Whoever is, you know, saying such, I believe the onus is on them to prove why they are saying what they are saying. So I will not 
comment on things that I don't have, you know, facts mm. and information on, mm -hmm. it will be needless to do that. Okay, now earlier on you talked about uh, Nigerians, you know, uh, becoming card-carrying members so that, you know, they can have a say. But does that in turn make them decision makers? Because you yourself said you're not one of the decision makers. Decision making has segments in party pro processes. You have the National Executive Council of the... You have, you start with, you have the Board of Trustees. Mm -hmm. You have the caucus of the party. You have leadership. You have the National Executive Council of the party. Then you have the state replicating what you have at the national level, except the, the, the BOT. Mm -hmm. You go down to the local government, down to the ward level. You have the same structure of chairman, secretary, and the rest of them. Now, what people don't understand is this. Decision of how leaders emerge in a political party is also segmented. The leadership at that level, which is the governors, you know why the governors are very significant in decision-making processes in a party? It is because of delegates. Most of them control their delegates. Mm. And he who controls delegates have a say in how, you know, leadership emerges. How do they control delegates? Mm. Delegates are elected at the ward level. That's where it starts from. Then to the local government level. Then to the state level. The combination of all goes to the national level and elect a leader. Now, at the ward level, when the congresses are done, that is when the various leadership of the political parties are elected. A majority of Nigerians sit back and allow individuals, aspirants, and leaders go down to the world level and buy forms for people, mm. fund their electoral processes, and put people they want as ESCO members, as delegates. Dictators. Now they own them. Mm -hmm. Now the accumulation of that converges at the state level under the governor mm. in some cases. Mm. And that gives him ownership or that gives a particular leader ownership. Some states you have pockets of leadership where the governor has a particular you know, control. Another party, maybe a minister or something, has his own mm. control. Now the combination of that converges at the national level. And that gives you the power to negotiate. Now what happens if majority of Nigerians at the world level are now card carrying members of the party and they are more interested on how those leaderships are elected. Now, when you abandon your responsibility as a citizen and those that have no capacity, they are not aware of the implication of their actions. There's going to be a, 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 a party congress in Ward A and the responsible personalities and leaders within that ward absent themselves from the process and somebody now goes and selects some individuals who don't even know the implication of what they are supposed to do mm -hmm. and buy forms for them and bring them in as ward executives and then when it is time for election of delegates he just nominate names and they elect them mm -hmm. that is what is happening in most of the places in this country and another problem when you g get to that level because the, those that are exposed enough or, you know, intellectual level, their intellectual level has reached a level where they are conscious of their rights, mm. refuse to partake in the process, <laughs> then these people, their mindset is completely, I have to be a delegate because I'm going to be getting money at primaries, congresses, conventions. This is the mindset of the average Nigerian delegate. They are not there because they are going to elect leaders on credibility. Mm. They are there because most of them were selected to protect an interest. Mm. So what do they do? Their mindset is, is targeted towards conduction of primary so that you imagine an aspirant, a presidential aspirant, giving $3,000 per delegate. $2,000 per delegate. Mm. And you have about 7,000 delegates. 
can't we lose the delegates or do it some other way? That is the problem. How do you do it some other way? They have already monetized it to the lowest, the lowest level because people like you have refused to be card carry members. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The intellectuals of this country have refused to get involved at the world level politics. And that is where the damages are coming from. Why can't we just do the direct primaries and just... If you're doing direct primaries, you are money. dealing with the members. It's the same people you are meeting. Oh, my. Because the intellectuals who can not be bullied mm -hmm. by the money bags have stayed away from being members of political parties. Mm -hmm. They have absent at the world level. You understand? The bank managers, the doctors, the lawyers, the, the engineers, the architects have converged at the city centers. They read newspapers and watch programs every morning and are very good critics and analysts. Mm. But you ask them, how do delegates emerge at the world level? They don't have an idea of it. Yeah, exactly. So if you refuse, if you remove yourself from the micro level that determines who becomes the leader of this country, and then you sit at the le middle, middle level, and when they finish the damages and produce garbage for you, then you begin to complain. If doctors, engineers, professionals, and teachers, and whoever goes back and become card carry, carry members, do you think anybody will come and bully them? And if they become delegates themselves, will that not have an impact? So we need more of intellectual, you know, people of higher standing to become conscious of their rights. Becoming a card carrying member and getting involved in the selection process of leaders is not, doesn't mean you compromise your standards. There are people that are naturally exempted from uh, partisan politics because of their position in the society, but they are not more than 10% or 20% of the people. Majority of the professionals and educated elites in this country are not exempted from being card carrying members of political parties. They should be and go back to their wards and become interested on how delegates are. That will reduce the power of monopoly by a few individuals who come to sit down and decide who becomes the president of Nigeria. Okay, oh. just before we go on a short break, you're talking about, um, you know, those that were exempted. Now, in some quarters, you know, they're actually saying that they plan to exclude senators, reps from the National Convention. Now, it's, it's the same thing I'm saying. Mm. When you bring people who are delegates who don't even know they are left from their right in some cases, because these people, if you look at their background, you profile them, you understand that they don't know what we are talking about here. Most of them. Those that do know are already, you know, sentimental. Most of them are only there for the money. The moment you mention party primaries, what rings a bell in the average party delegate is how much I'm going to get out of the process. So it is left for the delegates to now analyze the modifications. And these modifications are supposed to be sent to the party at various levels for them to understand the implications. And then if it is OK, they converge at the national conventions and say, yes, we agree and it becomes law. Mm. But if they are not well informed of the implications, plus or minus, they come there and just shout yes to whatever it is announced. Mm. And when the problem comes in future, they will be the first people to complain about the problem. <laughs> okay. Let's quickly go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll be getting your final thoughts uh, on the program. Just stay with us. Or read about the statistics showing that only 12% of the state targeted population is vaccinated against COVID-19. Gombe said government has summoned stakeholders meeting. Speaking at the event, the deputy governor, who is also the chairman COVID-19 management committee, asked stakeholders to do more and get people vaccinated against the pandemic. I was in Abuja with the president. And Kumbi was known among the states that were not doing very well in vaccination. It's not a good story. Whatever we do here, whatever we do here, is important to the presidency. So when they said Kumbi was not doing well, and they said Nasarawa and Tikawa were doing well, I felt sad because I thought. 
what we are doing now. Please, we must catch up. We must catch up. Today is not a directive from the Deputy Governor of Uchama. We are going to put our heads together here. You have heard that we are not vaccinating people enough. We will listen to all contributions from the traditional rulers, from the actors, to suggest or even identify why we are not. According to a report released by the Gombeset government, so far a total number of 277,000 took the job, representing 12% of 1,940,630 targeted population. First dose, while only 14% took their second dose, then for each year, they have 10% the target population that took their first dose, but only 5% took their second dose. So cumulatively, the state summary is 12% of the target population that took their first dose, while only 6% took their second dose. Next slide. So having said that, we have come up with a target that we want to ensure that this target has been vaccinated before the end of March. And if we do that, we are going to reach a 15% that is expected of us. The State Ministry of Information attributed the low vaccination rate to fake news being circulating over safety reasons. We need to fight against what is called in the information cycle infodemics. Just like we have the pandemic, we also have infodemics. The infodemics is the fake news that you know flies faster than the correct news. It's also a disease out there. Unless or until we are able to take care of that, uh, we will continue to have resistance. Because I was I was at the church meeting recently in Katugo. They brought the vaccine there. They are now so I didn't see people showing up because of what they already believe, and we must work hard to break that so that people will know that this is actually safe. This is also for our own goods. And sometimes, you know, they come up with kind, some kind of arguments that you cannot even defend. Stakeholders are now challenged to come up with a strategy that will help boost vaccination against the COVID-19 pandemic in Gombe State. From Gombe, Ibrahim Ismail reporting for Trust TV. <laughs>
you talk of maybe the farmers, the traders, the all the, uh, the other people who are, have relative level of education mm. exposures, and they take, they look, they, they look up to some people for guidance, either religious leaders, traditional leaders, you know, community leaders, uh, political leaders, and other people who are now the elites. Within the elites, you have different categorization. You have the business class, the professional class, the civil class, as the civil servants, the security class, they're all elites. We need to get more involved in our political process because an average elite cannot be bullied. Mm. That's, the pro that's, 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 that's the advantage. Nobody can come to you now and force you to take a decision to do his bid. Nobody can do that. Now, people can only be bullied if they, 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 are not, they don't have that relative level of independence of thought. At every ward in this country, everybody in Nigeria belongs to a ward or comes from a ward in a local government in a state. If you go down to the ward level, I'm particular about the ward level because that is where 80% of the damages are done. What we have at the state and national level are secondary problems. The problem is down there. The selection or election processes. Go to every average, get an elite today and ask him or her, who is the counselor of your ward? I bet you majority of them don't know who is representing their ward at the counselorship level at their local government. <laughs> Ask, do a survey, get 100 elites and ask them at random, who is the counselor representing your ward? What is the person's background? What the, is the person's educational level? Most of them, one, don't even know who the counselors are. Those who know will tell you that their level educationally is either secondary, some primary, some no education at all. Now, when you put those people, when you allow those people to become counselors, they are subjected to be manipulated by whom? The local government chairman. Mm -hmm. Or the elites within that enclave that classify themselves as political leaders. They bring these people together and they are the councillors there and they are at the mercy of the local government chairman who is controlled by the governor. Because the elites stay away. If a lawyer, a practicing lawyer, decides to become the counselor of his ward, can he be bullied? Oh, no. That's the problem. When the bright people refuse to get involved in the election processes within the party structure, then we should not complain when that party produces a result that does not suit our interest mm. or suit the generality of national interest. So when I say, intim when you say intimidation or being bullied, <laughs> the context is, you know, you have to narrow it to participation. Mm -hmm. I am not saying professionals should all go back and become partisan in becoming secretaries and chairman of party. No. But they should be card carrying members of parties because that gives them the power to, act, to participate in processes. Now, assuming you have a lot of these professionals at, as card carry members of APC at that level. And when delegates' elections are going to be held, they all go back and participate in that election process and make sure that credible people are elected as party delegates. I don't think we'll be here talking. Mm. Because money policies will now be out of the question. When you have professionals as delegates, getting interested in becoming delegates, mm. And they cannot be bought over by 5,000 naira, 20,000 naira. They will come here and look at the faces of the aspirants and elect those that they feel are credible. Okay, well, just before we wrap up, are you contesting for any election? Well, there are many calls that uh, have been made for me to vie for the position of the president. Okay. I think I've seen and, jingles too. I've, I've and seen the jingle. okay. I have considered them mm. and I will soon declare. Okay, but uh, does your manifesto tackle uh, some of these or all of the issues that we've listed on the table? You see, 
that is another chapter entirely. Because what we have today is you have aspirants writing books and calling it manifesto. Mm. What is a manifesto? A manifesto is an embodiment of a vision mm -hmm. of an aspirant, isn't it? Right. Now, what is your vision? There is no a segment of this country talk about economy, agriculture, security, and other things that have not been properly captured in one policy or the other. If you, whatever document you are going to put today will be a repetition of a particular government policy in any way. Mm. What I will be selling rather than documented, you know, programs is leadership that is focused, selfless. Mm. And within the context of that, integrity. Mm. And when you define integrity, you are not talking of the personal integrity of the individual. You are talking about process management. Nigeria's problem is a system problem. It's a leadership and a system problem. If I say I will construct road today, I will do hospitals, I will do this, I will do that, you know what? I'll be lying to you. Why are we having challenges in construction processes of our roads and our buildings? It is because of our electoral act processes. What you need is a leader that will not be you know, guided by negative emotions, but that will be selfless, and once you have that person as a leader, he will make sure that the integrity of the processes mm. counts and enforcement of the law is properly, you know, entrenched. Okay. And we uh, look forward to seeing all that. You definitely. Know, Yes, thank you so much for uh, spending time with us uh, in the studio today. I uh, hope to have you again someday. All right, uh, that was uh, Chieftain of the APC and also presidential aspirant, uh, Dr. Ibrahim Dauda, you know, uh, just sharing his perspectives on uh, uh, APC internal wranglings and, you know, <laughs> in general, you know, uh, politics in Nigeria. And with that, we've come to uh, the end of Daybreak today on Trust TV. Thank you so much for staying tuned. We'll be back again tomorrow. I am Dashan Hussein Osman. And I'm Zainab Bala. See you tomorrow.